I'm going to talk about a side of myself and perhaps you that is a little darker than I typically do. And that is because this last week has had a lot of notes of darkness for me. Um, so I want to start off by saying that uh, I had the good fortune of getting a whole other unexpected month with my podcast co-host, Chewy. Uh, but this past Wednesday, he took a sudden and profound turn for the worse. Uh, and so it became clear that the rest of his life was going to be suffering and that there wasn't going to be much more of it. So um, I did what I believed was the right thing. What I still believe was the right thing was the worst decision that I've ever had to make. Uh, and I took him to the vet and had him euthanized. And I was able to hold him through most of the procedure, and I was able to keep my hands on him throughout. And uh, yeah, it's strange to think that there's been no living being that has been with me longer than he was with me. Uh, even my parents, my brothers and sisters, I didn't live with anybody as long as I lived with Chewy. Uh, he never judged. I don't know if cats are able of judging or if he did judge. He was the one consistent person who judged me worth being around. At any rate, uh, I don't have a lot of words right now. And the mind is this very dark and horrible place sometimes. So even as I was going through that day, I was thinking about how the last couple of months, really since the middle of November, uh, my ability to sell books has just dropped off a cliff. My ability to find new readers has all but disappeared. And I kept thinking, throw me a bone. Throw me a bone, won't you? To the universe, to God, to whoever. Throw me a bone, please. But no bones are thrown. And when I have a moment of clarity, I recognize that that kind of thinking is perverse and selfish and it's kind of the lowest, most base version of me. So I confess that I don't want the universe or God to throw me a bone. I just want the strength and the courage to keep moving forward. I try to editorialize my existence and say, wow, it was a really tough year. I lost my father figure one of the most formative men in my life, February of 23. And I lost my best friend in January of 24. And I acknowledge that that sucks. I acknowledge that um, that's not something that anybody wants to go through. But it doesn't mean throw me a bone. It doesn't mean that I get any special treatment. It doesn't mean uh, that karma is going to tip the scale in my favor now. It doesn't mean that today anything is going to turn around. And I still have to keep pushing forward and keep moving forward. I thought about just doing a recap episode today. I am going to wrap up here pretty quickly, but the message that I want to leave you with is somber but true and that is no matter what you're going through or how hard it feels there's no way out but through if you quit because you're burdened and weighed down 
there's no relief in quitting. And if you carry forward, there's no guarantee that you're going to get to the other side of the dark tunnel anytime soon. You chose this path at some point, whatever path you're on, you chose it. Let me be clear, you chose to be close to that person you loved who died. And that's why it hurts. You chose to have that best friend and to be vulnerable and to invest in and to let yourself fall deeply in love. And that's why it hurts so bad. You chose to go on this journey to try to find readers. And that's why not having them hurts so bad. There may be uh, a way to deceive yourself into thinking that you've escaped by quitting. There may be a way that you can blame somebody else for your misery. There, way, there, there may be ways that you can hide from the pain. But the only actual way out is through. And the only way through is to continue. So if there's just one of you listening today who needs to know, that you can't quit yourself into relief or feeling better, then I'm glad that I took the time to make this. I haven't told anybody else. Um, my sister found out as an aside through some text messages that we swapped this last week. Of course, my wife knows. My kids don't even know. Um, I don't know how to talk about it, and yet I'm afraid I'm exploiting him in, in telling my faceless audience. I don't think he would feel exploited, though. I don't think that my heart is to exploit him. Honestly, a lot of times this podcast feels like a spoken journal. I see that I have downloads, but there's a very small amount of interaction, in truth. I don't get a lot of people regularly commenting. I don't think that I have built the kind of community I wished I had where a lot of people came to build relationships and help build each other up and push each other forward and, and be better book marketers. But again, there's no other way out but through. So I will keep putting this out into the airwaves and hoping that occasionally I'm speaking to somebody and in speaking to somebody, I'm helping them forward in their journey. Alrighty, we will talk to you on Wednesday. Thanks.